So you've said you're focused on deep tech startups addressing aviation and aerospace. What exactly does that mean? What kind of technologies are you looking for? So it's a, it's a large number of technology, both um, that are uh, related to either CubeSats or launchers or even the, um, you know, flying cars, supersonic jets, but also uh, enabling technologies like new type of materials, uh, batteries, fuel cells, uh, sensors, that type of stuff. So, yeah. And the plan is to make a lot of investments at a s smaller rate, three to five million dollars, right? Exactly, yeah. So I'm curious, how far does three or five million dollars go in an aerospace startup? You know, biotech investors will tell you it has to be at least 20 million dollars to make even a small difference. Um, so b basically, it's the first stage. Right? It's, uh, it's going to be Series A investment. Uh, there have been already quite a, 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 some success with this type of investment and this type of startups. And so basically, the, you, we are looking at startups that are three to four years of existence and that will help go from uh, you know, a, a prototype to a more mature product and help them you know, uh, address a, a larger and a broader market. So are these very capital intensive types of businesses? Um, some uh, could be, yes. Some will be a bit less, but it's, uh, it's like the, the, the first major investment before a Series B and Series, uh, series C, where we'll see rounds uh, more around 30, 40, 50 million uh, of investment. You've said space tech is today where biotech was 15 years ago. What do you mean by that? Aerospace, basically. And so what we've seen from, from the large uh, corporate players is that uh, they are more and more looking outside their traditional R&D center for in innovation. Ah, uh, we've seen that in, in that industry, more and more technology are not the legacy technology from the aerospace industry. And so they are more and more looking outside of their boundaries um, to look for uh, you know, uh, new technologies, smaller team, more agile, to integrate in, into either their product or their organization to um, bring on the market more innovation. Now, you've also said that the U.S. is the best place to work on an aerospace startup. And I wonder about space in particular because there was a decades long break uh, when it comes to at least federal funding, federal investment in, in space. The White House has just re-embraced it. And I wonder, will it still be the best place under President Trump? So what, what we've seen regarding, regardless of the, 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 the president is that the, both the NASA administration, the OSTP from the White House, they have been uh, very keen and, and, um, um, and uh, very proactive in, in putting the, 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 the U.S. money on, on the right bets. Uh, and so uh, what we've seen is that uh, more and more money, even for, from NASA, is going on, on small venture and, and, and small startups. We just did a really interesting story yesterday about how China is, is investing more in space. Of course, there's also Russia. The U.S. cooperates with China and Russia more than they have in the past when it comes to space. But I wonder if, for example, uh, the new White House pulls back on space investment, will that open a dangerous door? Could, could, could China and Russia get ahead in a way that is not good for so the United States? Re regarding the current situation, I, I don't think that the, the, the White House uh, will uh, uh, reduce their investment in space. I, I don't see that coming. Uh, I, I think it's going to be more the opposite. Space will still be a very strategic place to be in and to uh, be ahead of the others, um, whether it's for, for satellite or any type of uh, observation or communication technology.